what's going on everyone so this is i guess the official intro because i tried to make an intro to that but i couldn't find it uh, i didn't really think i was going to make this a video but we're going to be doing a rough country six inch lift on my ram which is over there you can't see yet and we did paint the suspension gold i wanted to powder coat it but it just was it wasn't in the budget and so the door shut sorry uh but it's not really a how-to it's more of a follow along so don't I'm sorry if I didn't record every single step but I also wanted to get it done as soon as I could because I didn't do it in my house I did it in my neighbor's garage um, they let me borrow their garage because it was gonna rain that weekend so shout out to them and this is a two part so the first part is this video this is all disassembly I didn't record much in the back side of the truck I'm sorry but I recorded most most of the assembly in part two on the back so make sure you guys watch that it'll be up about a week after this video so i hope you guys enjoy and don't judge my other intro all right what's up guys so today's gonna be the officially the first video of the truck build right here i got the uh lift already in but before we start and then i'll give you guys a run through of the lift that came in i'm still waiting on some control arms but here we got the springs that we're gonna get powder coated Got went with rough country. Where are the shocks? There's the rear ones. There's the front ones. Um, and then I believe these are the knuckles. All right, guys. So this is the old color that I tried to choose, and it was supposed to be gold, but as you guys could see, it's like a green, yellowish. Um, and for this one, I just sanded it and went ahead and painted it and added clear but as you could see there's a lot of texture from the powder coat so what i'm going to try to do is sand it with the 600 which i didn't have last time i only had 800 uh sand everything down uh not too smooth but since this is the suspension it's not a huge deal and then add this self-etching primer i bought a whole bunch of it as well as the 600 grit um brought more cans there and then repaint it to this color which is the new color that i got so let me put this away and this color is a little bit more bronze, metallic. Let's see if it'll pick it up on camera. It looks a little brown, but there's a lot of pearls. I'm hoping the camera picks it up, or metallics, I should say. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and sand everything first. Uh, give it like two layers of primer and then get it ready for this paint all right guys so i got the knuckles here painted uh well at least half of them half of the side um and then this is the skip arm or the skip plate that i previously painted with the old paint that i didn't like so i'm gonna just go ahead and prime that up too and then i have the springs over here i try to get as most as i can inside and then basically since they're hanging down or this way spraying from the top down and then i'm gonna flip them over and spray the same from the top down right now it's not as important because this is just primer and these were already painted but whenever i do paint them with the real paint um these are gonna be a pain in the butt and now the only thing that i have left to paint um are these zone control arms these are powder coated a lot better than the rough country kit All right guys, so this is my garage. And yeah, it might look a little different. And that's because I wrapped up everything so that there'd be no overspray or no, uh, or at least minimize the powder and dust coming in. And I got most things hung up using a rope for the heavier stuff and then down to zip ties. Um, same with that one. And then for the springs, I think I'm gonna leave them on here because I'm gonna have to spin around and then flip these. Um, I have these on some party string, or I'm not sure what you call this, but I just double, double layered it. These aren't too heavy. Um, these as well, and I still gotta hang up some stuff. The thing that's gonna be really heavy are the knuckles over there, which you guys can't see right now. So I might use this to hang it. I'm not too sure yet, but I'll let you guys know tomorrow morning when I have everything hung up and ready to paint. Paint gun over here ready. I'm gonna be using this HVLP one today. I set up the fan already, it's got a little bit of water. 
And I'm at about Should be at about 30 I'll lower that down So now I'm just gonna mix the paint Two, two part paint One part uh, paint diluter And I'm using a medium reducer So I'll show you guys when this is mixed All right, so I've been trying out a whole bunch of settings and what we want is right here, kind of heavy in the middle and tapered up. So about six inches. That's kind of what we're going for. So hopefully this lasts me a decent amount because it took up about half of my court. And let's get to painting. I'll show you guys after the first layer. All right guys, so this is after the first coat. It did go on pretty light. Don't judge my painting abilities. Um, these got pretty good coverage. And I still got about half of what I put into my gun. So about 250 milliliters left. And the second coat, I'm gonna go a lot heavier. Try to see if I could get full coverage on some of these parts. At least to where the primer doesn't show. These are the ones that are gonna take up most of the paint. I have to go over them a lot. They kind of look good right now. They're like silver goldish. But I'll show you guys the second coat. All right, guys. So this is the third coat on most of these and I don't know, I like the color, but it sprays on a lot darker than it looks right now. I'm not sure if that's because the clear coat isn't on or what, but usually when it sprays on, it looks a lot more uh, metallic. Might just be because the texture of this stuff is um, not, too, not too smooth compared to paint. But from a distance, it looks pretty gold, as you can see. So I'm hoping when I put the uh, clear coat on, they get a lot darker. But yeah, the only thing that's a pain in the ass right now are these springs. So I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna go ahead and let them dry and then I'm gonna flip them over and give them a coating. So I was trying to get the dupe color clear coat, but at the store I went to, they didn't have it and I was in a rush. Um, so I bought two cans of these uh, and then I have a little bit left over. Whole can somewhere, right there. So. I'm gonna go ahead and give everything in the, that I painted about three coats. And I'm not gonna show you guys until the last, until I'm done because I mean, it's just clear coat, there's no point, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right guys, so I went to the store this morning and bought some stuff real quick that I might need. So I do have a rubber hammer, hammer, but I bought this uh, dead blow hammer. I bought a big magnetic tray so I don't lose nothing. I got some, but they're a lot smaller. And then you guys are gonna need a, either a cutoff blade or a grinder or some uh, sawzall blades. So I brought fresh ones and then some uh, Gatorade and also some spray paint just to touch up wherever we cut. So just make sure you guys have everything. All right guys, so as you knew, I was gonna lift the truck in front of my garage, but this is my neighbor's house. And what happened was when I was building the tent yesterday, she asked if uh, I wanted to use her garage since nobody lives here. And um, I took some measurements and this place is huge. And this door is about a two foot advantage from my truck or from my garage. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the truck here, uh, take some measurements real quick, make sure it's gonna fit and shout out to her. All right, guys, so as you guys can see, there's barely enough space back and in the front. And I initially, I can't really tilt it this way, but it's okay, this will work. I initially faced it this way, but then I had to turn it because I'm not sure if this garage door opens and I have to lift it up from the front to jack it up. 
Um, so I'll just open that one, put the jack in there, jack it up, put on the jack stands and I should be fine. Um, another thing is I am gonna have to remove the back one, or this one's already off, but the other fender flare. So while I'm at it, I might remove all four. I'm not too sure. So let's go ahead and jack up the truck and I'll show you guys when that's up. Okay, so I got the truck lifted and both front tires off. So now it's time to disassemble all of this. Um, I got the instructions here. This is my first time doing it. This is not a how-to. This is just a follow along with me kind of thing. I try to show you guys everything I do, but not step by step. Um, so let's get to it. All right guys, so there's uh, most of the assembly off, Con the knuckle, um, the axle, the caliper, the struts out over there. Um, now we just gotta get this lower control arm off so we could uh, put the cross member and lower it, but these bolts are pretty hard in here. So the other side is exactly the same. Um, there's Ivan, the Subi, and I see, I'll show you guys when I get that lower knuckle out and the CV actually, we gotta pull this one out. All right guys, so there we, Ivan just loosened up the bolts for the diff and we're ready to drop it, so. All right guys, there it is. It's out. Those bolts were a pain in the ass. Um up there both of those they were so hard to reach if they would have been inserted from this side it would have been 10 times easier um there it is it's out so quick update i try to go get some six ton jack stands not because it's heavy but just because to get a bigger height so i'm gonna go ahead and swap these out there we go guys so i moved them all the way back here and this should give us a lot more space over here now the only thing we're struggling on is this lower control arms. This bolt does not want to come out of the bushing, so I'll let you guys know how we get it out. All right guys, this is day two. And today we're still gonna be attempting to take off these control arm bolts in one piece because I don't want to replace these, but I guess we'll find out. All right guys, so these control arm bushings are just not gonna come out. Uh, we try to heat them up with this torch. Somewhere around here. And they just did not want to come out. So the last resort is gonna be, I did buy, I went to go buy bolts and these did end up fitting. They look a little different, but I tried them out right now on the one that I managed to take out right here. So luckily I got one out to test them and uh, it seems like these are still pretty good. So we're just gonna use a sawzall and some blades and cut right here on the inside. So this will just slide out and then pop the bushings out and I ordered new bushings and everything. So I'll show you when this is cut out. All right guys, so I just left the dealer. Well, I'm here at the dealer still. And uh, I ordered four new bolts. They, they had two in stock, the OEM ones. It came out to 127 um, compared to the ones at the auto parts, which came out to about 160. The only problem is that these didn't come with nuts or the uh, back camber adjustment, but luckily I have those off at home. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is, right? So here's a rundown of what I got. I got the uh, four bushings for the control arms because I am planning to push those old ones out and put new ones in. Um, I did order brand new control arms with all the new bushings just in case I can't, but I'm really hoping to use these because I would save about $250. Um, and these, they look like they're the same and the bolt fits. <clears throat> and then I got these Diablo blades. I got two packs because man, I went through like three blades yesterday and I barely got halfway through the bolt. So, um, and if that doesn't work out, then hopefully this cutting wheel does. Um, so yeah. of the time on this side I use the sawzall just because there wasn't enough space for my cutting disc on the grinder but on the other side I used the grinder and those cut off super easily but this was a pain in the ass and finally got them out so now hopefully these bushings come out good and nice and easily tomorrow so I'm gonna clean up 
it's dark outside so it's been a long day i tried to uh press these out but man uh this this press that i rented was just way too small and i could use a, a big 20 ton press but i just don't want to waste time and i want to get this stuff on tomorrow uh so i got the new ones in and i'm just gonna return the bushings that i bought to replace here and just save some time and probably paint these gold as well as those springs Especially around the welds, um, around here, everywhere, just smooth it out so that there's no loose rust. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this all with the undercarriage paint too, especially around here where the bolts came out. Yeah, here's both this assembled. I'm gonna sand these down and paint them and then reuse that part, that uh, this part, this part, and the spring and assemble it with the new shock. I don't know what I'm gonna do with those two uh, leveling blocks. I might sell them to some friends or something. Um, but yeah, there you go. Front, this is the, the front uh, passenger seat. Uh, we've taken everything out, the lower control arms, the strut assembly, um, the brake caliper is dismounted uh the small tie rod from the front sway link um and then i'm gonna be replacing this tie rod end but we we removed that too so the only thing left to do is um remove this one and get everything ready for install so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this brake caliper probably off of the frame right here so it doesn't just droop and um swap this out as well as the other side and then i'll show you guys what we gotta do on the back loose rust up here so i want to be sanding off as much or probably using a wire brush to clean up as most as i can and go ahead and spray this all with the undercarriage coat um everywhere that i see that there is rust just get everything black so i'll show you guys when uh i'm gonna first dismount everything that i need to dismount so i can get in here too and uh show you guys when that's done all right guys so on the back i'm gonna re be replacing these rotors and then this uh, shock, I need to dismount it from the top. And then I believe we're gonna replace this upper control arm um, with one the exact same size. So I don't know why um, they came with it, but eventually I'm gonna be replacing this one too, but probably not in this video. And then replacing this spring. Um, we dismounted this sway bar and the track bar somewhere. I think it's over there. Um, and basically we're gonna have to probably jack up the truck a little from the hitch and lower the diff with the jack and then um and then i'll get everything installed in the next video so yep <laughs> 